Good boy. I'm trying to teach my new hat that trick. I've never tried it with a pecan flavored hat before, but it's coming around pretty good. Welcome back to the Thursday evening Cowboy Fashion Report. This evening I've got on another show stopping Pearl Snap shirt and those Pearl Snaps. This has a midnight shenanigans base with some hackberry accents and seven year old heavy bed Bramer cow undertones. It's a nice spring edition, I think. I'm going to tell you another story when I was out there in Arizona. Well, I really I wrote a poem about it. But I was going to talk about it for just a second because I like to talk. Uh, this is one of the times we went to town. We were camped way down at Francis Creek. and I'm, It's been so long ago. I, I'm pretty sure it was in December. It had to be. been. And we took Strawberry Town with us. Strawberry the horse wrangler. And I've talked about him before. He was, he was on up there in his... 60s probably maybe close to 70 and uh strawberry didn't do real good in town uh he did real good out there at the ranch but anyway we all come back from town after a two or three day drunk and this is a setup for that poem it's called peaches Y'all's heard me rattle about catching wild cattle through the bushes. They'd ride rope and tear on iron-jawed old snides with slab leather sides and the attitude of an old mama bear. They're about riding the canyon rim on a trail that's too dim where death is no further than a stumble. Almost immortal, these men seem, kind of like living in a dream, and somehow still manage to stay humble. But let me tell of my participation in this chronicled narration for cowboy action is all but eclipsed about how my day was enlightened by a common household item, the best can of peaches to ever cross my lips. We'd been off a few days and had launched a foray. Then we all come crawling back from town. From the wagon to the bar, it was indeed pretty far, and sobriety in our midst was hard found. Cole was waiting at camp, and like a cheery old scamp, his happy mood was neither attractive nor fetching. As we stood there, heads a-spinning, he just kept on a-grinning, leading out them hangover cures he was catching. Somehow we lost Ben, but discovered him again as we were about to trot out for a few miles. His situation looked dire as he stood in the cook fire, stirring scrambled eggs with a smile. He says, I cooked y'all breakfast, but no one had any interest. The way our bellies were rolling and churning. As our heads rang like a bell, I could already tell that my throat was going dry and burning. As we lined out that day, it seemed like a long way. And in that country, it takes a while to get over yonder. And each cow that was found seemed to take the long way around. Would I survive this day? I begin to wonder. As we slowly came together, I was amazed at the weather. For December, it was sure hot and dry. As we ambled along, I thought of that old song, Water, talking about Dan and I. As we made our hard tracks in my throat at the back, felt like a dead, burnt cedar stump in an abandoned salt mine that from time to time was used as a sawmill dust dump. Now, I'll be the first to say that my thirst might have been as bad as any I've endured. This sounds pretty sad, but it was almost so bad as to strain out some wet cow manure. As the hold-up grounds grew near, I felt a sudden shot of fear, for the old hoodlum rig was nowhere in sight. No bin, no lunch fodder, no big blue jug of water. I started having trouble setting up right. Then we seen horses coming in and what looked like old Ben. 
behind him, bringing in our fresh mounts. He said, it was lunch for fresh horses. Then with my choices, our horse wranglers still down for the count. Well, as fresh caballos were saddled, I thought of a paddle and a boat with fresh water all around. As I lay against a rock wall under a beautiful waterfall and drank up till I nearly was drowned. Then through our death gauge, we were surprisingly amazed as Strawberry drove up, still a dragon. He had drove lunch all this way, but to our terrible dismay, he left the blue water jug back at the wagon. As I looked through the pickup bed for something to knock myself in the head, something heavy like a good frying pan, a shiny gleam caught my eye and almost made me cry. It was peaches in light syrup in a can. I stabbed my knife through the top and with a rock I did chop till the heavenly nectar was ready to sip. As we took turns of drinking, all I was thinking was well, that's the best damn peaches to ever cross over my lip. Y'all keep snapping.